Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. Yes, the Ender 5 Plus, she is a loud one, and people have been trying to silence her throughout all of YouTube. And with what? Oh, the 8 bit Creality Silent Board. Yes, 8 bit. Man, when I think about 8 bit, I think about the third generation of gaming consoles. And what's the third generation of gaming consoles? That's like the the Nintendo Entertainment System, the NES with Robbie the Robot, the Sega Master System, and let's not forget about the Atari 7800. Man, those were epic times. But that was over 30 years ago, and this is gaming. Yeah, I know it's a difference between printing, but when I think 8-bit, that's why I think about 8-bit. I'm not gonna replace an 8-bit, you know, do a silent board and with an 8-bit, and then replace it again. Not me, I spend my own money on this stuff. So, you know, I was one of the first people to bring you a power supply issue, swapping out the old crappy one with a mean well. So, and now that's all about YouTube, everyone's doing it. So, now, I'm taking it to the next level for this as well. So I'm not going to replace it with an 8-bit board, sorry. What am I gonna do? This is an A to Z upgrade. Basically, by the time I'm done with the internals on this uh, you know, electronics box, the only thing that's gonna be left original is the wires. So power wires, that's it. So what I'm gonna do, A to Z upgrade on the inside. So this is gonna be a very long video. I'm gonna apologize ahead of time, but there's gonna be timestamps, links to parts that you're gonna need to print out and everything within there. So what do I have? I purchased a 32-bit, yes, 32-bit Big Tree Tech SKR 1.4 Turbo. Yes, it's a turbo. Everyone wants that little extra boost. Got two 208 stepper drivers. And I hate to do it. I really hate to do it, but I'm going to replace the display on this. You know, it's no fault of Creality, but we've been waiting for the source code for a long time. The world is in um, different times right now, and there's delays on everything. So I only wish them the best, but we've been waiting for the source code for a while, and it's just time to upgrade the display now too. So I'm upgrading the display to the Big Tree Tech um, 3.5 inch version 3.0. It's got the dual mode so it's got the classic Marlin with the clicky thumb wheel and satisfy my needs a touch screen. So best of both worlds. You're going to need to print out two parts. One is for the SKR board and one is for the display to mount them within the existing electronics box. If you're not going to use it then you don't need to worry about it. And there's gonna be some carnage. What's Tripod's Garage without some carnage, right? We're gonna hack apart this case a little bit with a Dremel, open up some ports. Um, I'm gonna, you know, there's gonna be need to have an SD card extender. You could possibly do that with the other port ports as well. But I only purchased one because I knew this one was gonna be needed. So again, A to Z upgrade. Hope you're following along, right? So next is a Marlin Cafe. You know, I did dabble with Marlin, but I'm still absolutely a noob when it comes to Marlin. So. I did find something that might intrigue you on how to make it a little bit easier. My source code is going to be on GitHub by the time this video airs, so you'll be able to just download it and install the firmware yourself. But if you want to watch along, I'm going to show you step by step how to configure it. And then, yes, we're still not done yet. We're going to do uh, a firmware upgrade to the TFT display. So there's uh, two GUI modes that you can do, as well as, you know, we're going to upgrade our logos on air, make it a little bit more unique. Yes, the video is still going. Then we're going to do some test prints. So before and after. See what it's like and final thoughts on the upgrade. And I really appreciate you sticking along with this. So if you could please hit that subscribe button, that would be great. And hit that bell notification so you get you know all the notifications about when Tripod's Garage releases a awesome video. And hit that like button. And please comment below. I'm not the expert in this field. I'm just average show tinkerer showing what I do. That's all I do, right? Average Joe Tinkerer with one leg. A little bit more unique than that. So, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and see what I have and get going. All right, let's go over the board that I got. This is the Big Tree Tech SKR uh, V1.4. It's the Turbo Edition. So the Turbo is basically has the only difference between the Turbo and the non-Turbo. Non-Turbo is a 100 megahertz processor. The Turbo has 120. You know, everyone wants that extra boost. Uh, here we have a price of twenty one forty two. But as we look at this, uh, it doesn't have any drivers on here. And right here, there's no drivers on here either. As I mentioned before, I am going with uh, the TMC two two zero eight version three point uh, UART. So let's add that to the cart. Oh, right now we're at forty one thirty two. Let's see what we have for Creality. Oh, wow. Sold out again. Very popular item, I guess. Uh, people really want these things to be quiet. And it's $55. And can you upgrade? Nope. 
all oh, these are soldered on. Look, you're also missing one right here. So yeah, um, so much for adding maybe an extra um, something or another. So, all right, let's go back to the board here. Um, again, it's 41.32 compared to $55. So what do we get here? Well, we get a instructional video that you may want to look at. Doesn't really cover that much because um, it's not really close up zoom shots of the wiring. But uh, right here, you know, you got your specifications and uh, it tells you all basically everything you need to know right on this one site. It's great. Um, and here you have your basically all your pinouts and there's your BL touch right here. Um, so let's uh, so you're saying to yourself, well, how do I know to go from where to where? Um, well, um, TH3D has a nice little diagram here on on the upgrade. So, yeah, but the only thing I noticed that's not in here is where the BL touches. But I'll show you how to wire that up. And actually, two of the pins are reversed on there, so we have to make sure that we have our all pins in the right spots. So, yeah. So if you want to, you can take a screenshot on this or visit their site. I'll have that in the description as well. But uh, if we go back here. Now you can now basically just go, oh, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to put that there, blah, blah, blah. So we scroll down. Underneath the board, everything is labeled just like this. You know, So you don't have to worry about, uh, well, which pin is where. Well, if you, you know, it says 5 volt ground or 1.2, whatever. You know, this is for the X stop right here. And that's actually under the board. And we scroll down here, it just tells you what uh, motor drivers, if it uh, has a Wi-Fi module. We won't be covering that today. I didn't get that. Remember, I purchased all this stuff on my own. I don't wait for people to send me stuff. Um, you know, here's again, the only difference is, is the processor for the 1.4 and 1.4 turbo. And we can just scroll down more. It's just going through everything um, that uh, yeah, we're not going to be doing uh, RGB lights on ours. Not yet. Um, so talking about the thermistors, dual Zs, that's also why I got this. I'm not going to be running any splitters. So, and yeah, so again, so this is what's going to be very important is your driver mode here. I have the, the TMC 2208s and I'm going to be using this mode. So I'm going to remove all these jumpers that come in here, right? I'm only going to we're going to put them right here, and you'll see me as I wire it up. I will be taking out these jumpers. So, yeah, it's a very self-explanatory. And here's the bottom. But again, like I said, it it shows all the all the pin layouts of what they do. Very well designed, and especially for the price. So let's scroll back up. I want to add one more thing to the cart that I mentioned before that I got. Um, it says without display. Well, we are going to add a display. And there it is. We're going to get the TFT 35E3 version 3.0, and we're at $62.96. What was the price again for this? Uh, $55. Yeah, I think this is more of a win win every time I look at it. So, what's in this display, you ask? Well, this is a dual mode display, which is, you know, you may have seen it on YouTube videos before. It is a really, oh, hold on, let me go back up. You know, you could have the LCD uh, 12864 simulator or you could have the touch screen. So if you're a fan of the click wheel knob and, and you know, you, you want to dabble in the touch screen or both, you know, it's, you have that option with this. You know, it's got some other features on here. You got another instructional video. It's very short, but, uh, you know, you got the GitHub for it where you could, Change the interface icons around a little bit, update the firmware on it. Um, so you could, uh, yeah, it's got a kind of nice uh, um, layout here. You know, you got your um, some UART connectors, uh, you got the SD card slot, uh, flash, uh, USB flash drive port, and the Wi Fi module on here. Um, I won't be able to fit the Wi Fi module if I choose on the layout of the Ender 5 Plus because it kind of gets in the way of the chassis if i remember right could be wrong though and again look at this pinouts galore you know where everything goes it's so nice so and um everything is just plug and play for this 
it's really, really nice. They just, it's nice having things that are meant to work for each other. So, and um, so when we wire this, we're going to be wiring the both. We're going to have the the old classic style, as people want to call it, or, you know, uh, which is the LCD 12864 simulator. And we're going to be getting rid of that with the flash update. And, you know, and then you got the nice touch screen. I'm still very, I love touch screen, so that's just me. And we are going to be extending this. We're going to get a um, USB or, uh, sorry, memory card expander so we could uh, go outside of the chassis. So, yeah. So if we go to the GitHub, you, this is where you can uh, go ahead and do your uh, your formal firmware updates on it. All right. So now. Now let's start with some assembly. We're going to put these heat sinks on. You just peel off the film and stick on these heat sinks. We're going to do this to all five of them. It was a kit of five, even though I'm only going to be using four steppers. Now we're going to pull out all the pins, except for the, the one second from the bottom, just like in the picture. So we're going to just leave those in. Got lots of uh, these uh, pins. Anyone want to buy some? But if you see there, all the way across, second from the bottom. Now we're going to insert these steppers. They're color coded, black and red. Easy enough. If you watched my uh, video that I did for replacing the power supply, I didn't, I'm not a fan of turning printers on their sides. So uh, just remove the four bolts, take it out, lay it on its back. Pretty easy enough. Take out six screws, take pictures as a reference, and let's start taking everything out. I'm going to just start unplugging things. This isn't going to be a step-by-step -step wire to wire from one board to another guide. It's just a lot of stuff going on. And plus it would make this video about two hours long. And I feel that you wouldn't want to pay attention to all that anyways. So I'm just removing the screws from the board and I'm using a razor knife to score the hot glue. I, at least on this board, man, it felt like they put a ton of it on here. I mean, you know, especially this uh, end stop here, it was just caked. Someone really did not want these you know, these connectors coming off. So just be very careful and it'll come off. Now with these end stop pins uh, or connectors, you just need to trim off one of these little uh, notches here for it to fit. Uh, otherwise you will not be able to get it in place. So you just trim off one and then you'll be able to snap it right to the board. All right, so now we're going to be using one of the two printed parts right now. This is for the circuit board. The, of course, the Thingiverse files in the description. So again, you want to make sure you print out the two parts that I've noted here ahead of time. So that way you can have them ready for this phase. Otherwise, you're going to have to maybe put something like a rubber mat underneath here to print or hang it off its side or something. So I'm only going to put in two screws for right now. Um, I will put the other two in later because I'm going to be removing this to do some cleanup work. You can see how nicely this board lays right on top of it. It's a perfect fit, uh, but you do see that the USB and the SD card is right against the edge. Now we're going to just go ahead and continue with some wiring. I'm just going to go do this in time lapse because uh, at the end of this part, I will show you all the connections and where they go.
We're gonna remove this display. Maybe I can sell it on eBay for a few pennies. Here is uh, my diagram here. Top is the nozzle fan and the part fan. They're color coded there, so make sure you get it right. Towards the bottom, you'll see the two arrows pointing down. Make sure that you have your both your end stops all the way to the left for those two pins. Um, otherwise it won't work. And then make sure you're on the lower left, the bed and nozzles are in the correct spots too. Here's the BL touch. Um, these are the correct, this is the correct wiring. Um, you want to make sure that in the TFT display, uh, <laughs> reality had a couple of the pins reversed within there. So you'll see that now they're in order. Here we're now it's time for some case modifications. You want to make sure you remove the SD card first as we're going to do this and secure the board down before we trace this. This is why we temporarily put this in place. So we're gonna take this little flathead screwdriver that came with our Creality, and we're gonna score along the SD card. We're gonna basically outline it. You know, you can try to use a marker and stuff. I just found it a little bit easier to scratch it. And uh, we're gonna scratch along the USB as well. And then we're gonna take a Dremel to it. Yes, case modifications. Who's up for it? I know I am. So let's get going. And we move the board off to the side and you see the marks are in place. Yes, great to see. And uh, make sure you wear your safety glasses with this. Not worth losing an eye for this. I preferred using a Dremel. Um, it cuts a little bit faster than a hacksaw, but maybe I should have used a drill for the, um, for the USB port. Didn't turn out as well as I thought it would. Uh, I am using the plastic uh, static bag that came with the board to protect it. And before it's all said and done, I'm going to take a air hose to this, or if you take canned air, blow everything out. And it's a little hot. Yes, it's a little hot, John. Don't, what are you doing trying to get it out that fast? But I'm not that patient sometimes, just like other people. And now I'm going to clean up my mess here. Again, I'm going to use some compressed air and just blow it out. Uh, and I'm going to relocate this ground pin before I hook up everything. I figure this is a good suitable spot since uh, it's no longer going to be underneath the display. So please make sure that you hook up the ground pin. Now we're going to go ahead and just wire up uh, the display. We're going to do the EXP1 and 2 and LCD uh, pins. And power up and let's see if everything works. Now we're going to download some software. Now we need some software to configure Marlin. So we're going to download Visual Studio Code. I will provide the URL for this in the description below. But we're going to just go ahead and download it. I'm running Windows, but it's also available for Mac. So we're going to go ahead and uh, run this and save it, run it, whatever, and we're going to install it. Once uh, Visual Studio Code is installed, we're going to do a search for Platform IO IDE. You can just type it up in the search and find it, and then you're going to click on the little green install. It's going to take a few minutes for it to install. Once it's done, you will be asked to most likely close out the app and reopen it for it to work. But now we're going to be on our search for our Marlin configuration. So our special Marlin source after this is all done. So you might be asking yourself, hey, how are we going to get firmware onto this board? John, are you going to be going the route of, uh, you know, Marlin? Just going to the website, downloading Marlin and doing a config? Well, I started that process, but then... I was on um, uh, Creality's uh, Facebook page and I stumbled across something. It's called k3d.com. And they were talking about a custom firmware that uses Marlin, the most current version of Marlin, and it's meant for um, certain printers. So right here is their site, and uh, you know, k3d. And we're gonna go to firmware and we're gonna go on to what's called a Cheetah 5.0. Well, what is Cheetah 5.0? Basically, it's a, a custom wrapped firmware for available for a lot of printers that are out there. Um, and right here, you can see that, well, our board, and it's beta, but it's it, it works, trust me. <laughs> so it has our board on there, and it has our printer. Well, at least the board I'm using and the printer I'm upgrading. That is great news. So. Um, you know, we scroll through in here, it, you know, it tells us about the, you know, having the um, version 3 BL Touch and, you know, a whole bunch of awesome things on here. You know, it, you could customize hot ends and everything. Here you have some, you know, the downloads. Um, of course, we're going to go to 
GitHub. I don't trust this source, uh, but uh, we'll just keep that between me and you. But you have instructions, um, view instructions twice, but I don't know why that's on there twice. But anyways, so if we go to uh, the download right here, um, we could just go ahead and do a download. And I'll go ahead and download this um, and we'll get going. Now we're gonna open up VS Code and then we're gonna open up our project. So we're gonna just click on the drop down here and click on open. Wait for it to open here, and then we're going to click on Open Project. This is how we're going to open up the Marlin, Cheetah Marlin, to be exact. So we're going to just drill through, and we're going to look for a specific folder. So we're going to go into, uh, where are we going here? Marlin, Marlin Cheetah 5.0, and then we can drill down in there, drill down one more time, drill 2x, and then we're going to look for that platform I.O. right there. So, and that's when we click on Open Marlin. So, now we're going to Click right there where it's uh, Untitled, and we're going to expand the Marlin 2X, 20X, and then we're going to bring this down a little bit so I can see more of this menu. And then here we go. Let's get going. All right, now that we know how to load up Marlin, now it's time to start configuring Cheetah. So in here, we're going to be opening up five files. We're going to be opening up pins BBT SKR version 1.4. And when I click on it, you'll notice that the menu changes over here. It tells you where it's at. It's under pins and SKR V underscore or V1 underscore 4. We're going to open up the configuration.h, ports.def, printers.def, and configuration advanced. Now, for the sake of uh, speeding this along as fast as possible, the printer is actually working. I've already done all the work of going through these files, and this is why I'm having you open them up as of right now. If you feel like following along, great. If not, I understand if you want to just say, hey, John, where is the, the firmware file? I just want to do it this way and skip all this stuff. That's, we, you know, you have to go towards the end of this, this part, and I'll show you where that, that uh, file resides. So in the sake of uh, getting this moving as fast as possible, I have my line items listed out in front of me, and we're going to just go through this as fast as possible. I'll comment with what I you know, deem important. Otherwise, I'll just say this is the lines we need to change. Um, we're going to start with line 76 in the configuration.h. So this is the setup wizard. Um, like I said, this is meant for lots of different boards, and we're um, I already defined this. What I mean by defined, I got rid of the slashes. So when I say that I already done it, that means I already did this. So now that we got that out of the way, this is for the you know SKR um, version 1.4 Turbo. Now we're going to go down to line 109. This is for because I have the full graphics display. So the, um, and this is what's compatible for it. So now we're going to scroll down to 120. These are the driver types that I have. I have the TMC2208. I already added those in. And if you have different drivers, this is what you'll need to do. Again, I am doing the 2209, and that's what this tutorial is for. It's the TMC2208. I'm sorry. I have the 2208, and that's what this tutorial is for. So I have the X, the Y, the Z, and the E. Again, this is for the Ender 5 Plus. So now that those are all done, we're going to go down to line 139. This is where we define our printer. Again, this is meant for a whole different variety of printers. We're doing it for the Ender 5 Plus. Defined that. So now we're going to go down to 166. So this is the, um, you know, the Z Max, which is 400. And um, this is also why I have this uh, boards.def file open, because we're going to relate to that after I'm, we're done through part of this. So we we'll just remember the 400 for the Z. So we're at 166, now we're gonna do 169. We're gonna make sure that this is true. So it was false before. Now we're gonna go to 194. And we're gonna comment that this is a regular plastic extruder, stock CR10. Um, this is, as you see, there's multiple ones that you can choose. 
So, and now we're going to go to 212. We're going to define the Creality um, MK8. This is for the Micro Swiss. We're using Creality Thermistor. Pretty much self explanatory. 227 is next. We're going to define this as the stock heat bed for the Creality. Again, it's the same, pretty easy. You could use this for other manufacturers or other printers. So now we're going to go to line 238. This we're going to define auto bed leveling. We're going to go to 246 and 247. These have to be defined both. You cannot just say one or the other. They both have to be defined. This is a version 3.1 um, 3 BL Touch. And we're also going to define the, the, the version here. So again, you have to make sure that both of them are done. And 264. This is, uh, we're going to set, make sure that this is set to 20 for our probe edge because we are, as it says here, using holding clips. Yes, we are. We want to make sure that it has a safe amount of distance that when it's probing. Good thing to have, people. Now we're going to go down to 278. Okay, and this is saying that this is real original mount for the Creality uh, Build Touch, so it knows what the offsets are for it. So we're going to comment that, and we'll define that. And now we're going to go to 290. We're going to do advanced pause um, and 291 and 292. Uh, so we're going to do these, and this is the filament path. This is going from the extruder to the hot end. I just put 200, I'll define it later. Well, you basically want to measure how many millimeters it goes from the end extruder to your hot end. So here 200 was a good guess for you now. So now we're going to do also, we have a filament runout sensor. We're going to define that at 295. We're going to go to 431 next. And this is where we define our motherboard. Okay, this is... We click on this, you can see it actually pulls some information because I and this is all spelled out correctly and it's pulling it right here. So if we go to our boards definition, it's in here. So if we type in um, turbo and there it is, motherboards. So you're gonna copy this, this line right here under the boards definition and you're gonna paste it right here and then when you know that you have it correct see if i click it off if i hover over this it actually gives some information so that's how you know it's correct so we were on 431 now we're going to go to 435. of course i'm going to name my printer tripods garage okay, uh, we're going to go to 977. all right so this is uh we want to make sure that this is true from false so Line 977, define Z min probe. We're going to make sure that's true. And we're going to go to 1029. And this is a weird, weird one. Let me explain here. So during my um, testing, I've compiled this software. I can't tell you how many different times. Well, it, sometimes I would hit home and along the X axis, it would not hit the limit switch and it will stop at some point before well it you know it, after a couple hours of research i found out that there might be some noise generated and this was not defined at the time and it basically says this for accuracy some probes and there's a noise so it, it circumvents that I have tried this printer to get to fail at, uh, I can tell you how many times I tried, and it works now. So you, if you see that it fails on the end stops before it hits the end stops, and, and I'll post the error message right here. If you get this error message, that's when you need to um, define this. I, I would just define this anyways. So. All right, so we're at 1029. We're going to go to 1172 next. All right, so um, this is the Z Pro pin. So this is your BL Touch. 
So rem we're going to remember this P010 because we are going to, uh, this is actually in the pins file. So you could actually, uh, for your pins, for defines on your board, we're going to actually uh, circumvent to that in a little bit. But you want to make sure that this is uh, P010. And uh, we're going to go to 1189. And we're going to define this as 0 0.2. Now we're going to go to 1426 and 27. So that's uh, your bed size. As we all know, the, the bed size is 350 by 350, but that's not the actual size of it. But that's what you would want to define. So we're going to come back to this too in a little bit later. Now we're going to go down to 1480 and make sure that we define the filament runout sensor. All right, that was a big one. Now we're going to move to a simpler file, the configuration A uh, advanced. First, we're going to go to line 35. And we're going to set that to uh, 0 0.22. And now we're going to scroll all the way down to 1828. Yes, that is how far we have to go for the next, next file. Now, you could choose not to enable this, but on the touch screen, when I went to that, um, there was a scoring message saying that this was not enabled. I enabled it just to get rid of it. So, um, you know, certain commands, they, you know, it says enter the serial receiver buffer um, so they can't be blocked. So I guess this is needed. Maybe someone can tell me what this is for, for, the, for these codes, for the M108, M112, and M410. So if you comment below, that'd be great. So this is now enabled. So apparently it was important enough. So because I didn't know that it was needed. All right. So next we're going to go um, and to the pins file. All right. So remember I said that P010 is for the BL touch. Now this is where it comes interesting. I went and I did a uh, test and I kept on getting an error message when the probe the probe wasn't deploying. So what I did was I, after hours of researching, I decided I'm going to reach out to the Facebook group. So this is what I did. So I reached out to Facebook on the K3D Labs support group. I mentioned the problem that I'm having. I displayed, you know, I said, hey, I'm doing the under five plus and I'm using the you know, 1.4 turbo with a TFT uh, 3.5 display. And I'm getting the following error even when I connect through Pronterface of M99. So with all this, um, here came some troubleshooting. 18 of them. <laughs> so as we're going through here, um, they were saying, okay, well, what's your baud rate? Yeah, that's correct. So, and you know, I, as I said, I was getting that error and I'm getting it, here's a, the screenshot of it on the display as well. So they wanted me to verify that my connections were sound. Um, actually, here's uh, the video of it. There's the boot screen when you have uh, it loaded. So we're gonna motion it and we're gonna go to We're going to hit auto home, goes over, and nothing happens. And just has stopped. So the touchscreen display actually shows more. So this is when Thomas Anderson comes into a rescue. So and he says, hey, you know what? This is always a, this is a problem. Something needs to be changed. So um, 
this is when he asks me to verify that I have everything correct. So yes, I have these two wires are reversed um, from Creality. So you, I took the pins out, the wires out, and I put them in the correct locations. So Thomas then decides to PM me privately, and we go through some steps. This is when we go to the pins, uh, you know, BTT SKR version 1.4, or one, version 1 underscore 4. So right now, if we look for P0 underscore 1 0, you'll see that's defined here. Line 91 read uh, P1 underscore 27, and I changed it to P0 underscore 10 per Thomas Anderson's advice. So now we are defining this as actually the pin for the BL touch. Okay. So then um, I noticed that after this was all working. So now that got rid of that error, and now my printer was uh, the the x and y were flying off to the wrong spot so this is when i was told that the printer uh that def file takes control over other parts so we go to plus okay so remember in the configuration.h, we configured lines uh, 14, 26, and 27 as uh, 350 as a bed size. Well, you could put that in all day long. It won't matter because this is the file that overwrites it all for because we defined it as the Ender 5 Plus. So, and we need to change these two lines in the printers.def file to 358 and 358 and make sure the Z is set at 400. And then that's it. So I really want to thank uh, Thomas Anderson for saving my life on that one because I was like, this was totally new to me, especially this and how this all worked. And he explained it nice and thoroughly. So a good shout out to him for this. So now we're done. So as you see, I already ran this. I've ran this so many times and I've had success. <laughs> so um, what you're gonna wanna do is you could either go and hook this up to your you know, with the USB, make sure the SD card's in, switch the pin around to USB mode, and send it this way, okay? And it will do an upload right to the board, and the next time you power cycle the printer, it will upload the file. Or you can do a, which I'm gonna do, is a platform IO build. You click on that, and that's gonna save the file locally to the machine. And then you, oh, you copy that file to your, your your uh, SD card, make sure there's no files on there, you plug it in, it's all done. And that's it. So yeah, I know it took a while, but I really appreciate you uh, um, hanging in there. And, um, but for anyone that doesn't wanna do all this, I'll post it at my GitHub, where you can just download the firmware and copy it to your card. Now, a uh, disclaimer here is that I hold no responsibility if things don't work. You know, uh, this is proof uh, that it did work on my machine. Um, so if you do not follow the steps here or something happens with the firmware or something, I am not <laughs> responsible for this. So, all right, so let's go ahead and flash the, the printer with this file, and then we'll move on to flashing the display. Say that you want to update the printer by SD card and you want to hook it up through USB. Well, you're going to need to move the jumper back over um, to the off of USB and back to the power. And then you're going to uh, dive back into your computer and you're going to look for the firmware file. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to dive into Marlin Jita and then Marlin 2.0.x. And then we're going to go to dot PIO. And then build and then the board type which is a 1769 and there she is the firmware.bit and then look for your sd card and we're going to just copy the firmware.bin folder file over and there you go so you go ahead and you plug this into your uh um, printer you know and then the next time that powers up 
and it's going to update the firmware automatically. Pretty easy. It's just finding that file, as you see, it's a pretty long string up here. So you know, as soon as you know where it's at, it's not a big deal. Before we seal up the printer, we want to make sure that uh, we move the, you know, the jumper back off from USB back to VDD, so it's running off the printer power. I'm just running some tests right now. I'm making sure that uh, the probing is working. So for the auto bed leveling, the 16 points, I'm doing this with the uh, the basic Marlin display, and so far everything's to be working just fine. So now I'm also going to do some test prints and see how um, this Benchy is going to come out. So far, everything's looking pretty good. And I'm also printing out the display uh, bracket, so to speak, for the new display. That came out pretty nicely as well. Now we're going to just tidy up the wires. This, <laughs> this ribbon cable or a push pin cable has been nothing but a nemesis during this whole build process. So I'm going to just glue it down. Fortunately, um, Amazon Prime doesn't work really much anymore. And I didn't feel like waiting a couple of weeks to get this done. And since Creality decided to uh, use uh, hot glue, I'm going to do the same darn thing with this. So I'm just gluing down these pins here. And I'm going to do the same thing for the BL Touch. But uh, talking about stringing issues, you think that you have stringing issues on some of your prints? Try using a hot glue gun once in a while. Uh, it just gets everywhere. But you know what? Now they're going to be nice and secure, and I don't have to worry about them falling out again. Because I'm telling you, that cable just fell out all the time. It was so loose. Now I'm just going to tie wrap and organize these wires, and we'll proceed on to the next steps after this. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this uh, faceplate adapter. It's very uh, flimsy and lots of and lets a lot of bleeding light in around the edges. So I found a different one on Thingiverse. I'm going to print that out a little bit later. But meanwhile, I'm going to plug this in, screw it down, and form fit it. Well, this power switch is actually in the way for my extension for the SD card. So I'm making a temp cardboard template, tracing it around, and I'm going to relocate it. Yes, this means doing some more cutting. I'm going to cut out the, as use it as a template, and I'm going to move the power switch right over here. I'm going to go ahead and trace it and uh, with a screwdriver. <laughs> and now I'm going to take my good old Dremel out and cut me a hole. Of course, I used uh, some of the plastic uh, um, you know, stack bag as a little bit of a protection here. And then, of course, I got to blow out all the dust again. Didn't know I was going to need to relocate the switch. And right here I have some uh, tape that's actually used for uh, cell phones, it's meant for the display. It's very uh, thin and very strong. You want to prep the area first before you fix it. And uh, fortunately that, uh, this adapter has a nice little uh, loop in the ribbon cable, but we'll have to tie wrap that and tuck it to its side. But uh, now we're going to focus on the display adapter. I found a better file on Thingiverse, and you can see how much more stout it is. This was actually printed with the printer right now in its configuration. came out pretty darn good. So um, we're going to use this, and it looks like there won't be any bleeding white. So let's go ahead and take this apart and put the new one in. Well, it looks like I need a little bit more tweaking. The potentiometer is rubbing against the... The metal there and we don't want that to happen so we're going to take our another another dremel time here we're going to uh take our uh, little sanding uh, wheel here and carve out a little notch so that uh, potentiometer uh, could actually uh, fit there without rubbing anymore and uh yeah i know yeah well it is what it is guys <laughs> just take a dremel to the whole thing but it fits now that's all that matters let's finish wiring this thing up
want to emphasize one more time about the green ground cable that's uh, now been relocated right there. But if you take a look, the only thing that's original that's left here is the breakout board and wiring. Otherwise, everything else has been replaced on the inside. Last thing to do is plug in the last fan for the cover. We plug this in and let's seal her up. Put her all back together again. And now you can see Tripod's Garage ready. Literally just gonna scroll through this really fast. All the you know options through the click wheel so you guys can see that all the functionality is there. So let's update the firmware on our uh, new uh, touch screen here. I'm at uh, Big Tree's website here. We're going to find LCD screens here. And we're going to click on our uh, Big Tree Tech TFT 35 version 3.0. Click on that. So actually, this is such an easy site to navigate. Um, firmware is right here. We're going to click on that. We're going to back up to the root here. And uh, we're gonna scroll down. This tells you exactly what to do to upload the firmware. It looks like we have two modes. We have the classic and we got the unified menu. I really dig this unified menu. I like all the colors and everything. I like the status screen tells you a little bit more. Uh, to me, I like I like busy. You know, I, I like the old cars where you had a lot of buttons for the stereos. Oh, the busier the better. Just like the stereo in my garage. Oh, I love all the lights. So uh, I think we're definitely gonna go with that unified. And what do we need to do to upload it? So you download the files. Man, that seems pretty darn easy. Look at this. So you just match up the two that you need. So we have the TFT35 and uh, folder and we're gonna use the TFT35 bin. Copy it to a blank SD card. You're going to uh, then Put it on your printer, turn it on, and it should update. So let's give it a try here. First, we're gonna go with the classical 
classic music, right? Classic menu. See what that looks like. Uh, but I want to definitely go with this. But we're going to give them both a try and see what they look like. So we're going to go ahead and go back up. We're going to go ahead and click download. And we're going to uncompress the file and see what it looks like. Here's our uncompressed folder. I'm going to go in here. Okay, this looks like it's the classic. And yeah, this is the unified menu. That's the one I really want to do. But we're going to go in and do this one first. We're going to do the classic. And here's our two files we're going to need. So we're going to copy the TFT35. And then we're going to copy this TFT35 bin. This is, was a blank uh, SD card. Once these are finished copying over, we're going to go to the printer, plug it in, turn it on, and watch the magic happen. Take the card that we just put the files on, and we're going to plug it onto the side where the display is. The ribbon cable is coming out of the display, and we're going to put that in there. And this um, card slot is actually used for two things. It's going to be to update the firmware slash software on your display, and it's also going to be your uh, card reader for your files to print from. So what we're going to do now is wait for the files to load and uh, we'll go ahead and see what uh, it looks like. Now to get to the touch screen, you hold down the click wheel for three seconds and you select the touch screen option. And um, yeah, I mean, the menus are there and uh, you know, unfortunately I'm gonna hit the auto bed level and uh, it's gonna level the bed. And I really can't do much more navigation, but you get the gist of it. The menu buttons are there and you could uh, just navigate away. Um, yeah, you can also go into G-Code and enter your own G-Code if you want. There's some um, other options, menus, but uh, yeah, uh, everything's up to date now. So, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm not a fan of the classic, so we're going to upload the next one, uh, the unified menu next. Okay, I have to admit, I really didn't give it much effort for uh, that other classic display. I really wanted a unified uh display instead so but this still applies for both for editing the logos we're going to do what's called the the switch logo and the the boot up logo and uh switch logos this one is going to be a smaller one um this is uh when you switch the modes on the um display so i'm going to also then open up my logo in conjunction and so i can replace both so i'm going to try to do this as fast as possible here so we're going to look at the size of this, and we're going for height, and it's 95 um, pixels, whopping 95 pixels. So we're going to change that on my logo for the height to keep it uniformed, so it'll be 95 here as well. Once we change this, it's going to get really small on us, and we're going to need to increase the size so it's kind of workable. So let's go ahead and zoom back in on this and see our nice pixelated masterpiece. Now we're going to switch back to our the big tree logo and we're going to erase everything i'm sure there's a better process but we're just going to erase it and then we're going to switch back to my logo and we're going to go ahead and select the whole image and we're going to copy it and then we're going to paste it back into the big tree logo where it was so once we paste it in it will be uh nice and centered as soon as we Get to go there we go and there we go now we're going to uh, zoom in on it so it's workable and we're going to give it some nice big lettering but uh, remember we're working at small footprint here so big lettering is small lettering if you kind of get what I mean so we're going to do this in uh, red at the bottom it's gonna look big but remember the pixel size is pretty small but uh, yes we're gonna do this in tripods garage and we're going to save it over its original file. And then we're going to continue on to the boot logo. 
Well, now we're going to do the same thing to the logo. Actually, this is a bigger logo. This is the one that goes for when you turn on the printer. It's the big one splash screen that comes up. So it takes up the whole screen. And uh, we're going to open up Big Tree Tech's logo, and we're going to do mine as well. So this one definitely has a higher height. So we're going to verify that right now. And it should be, uh, yep, 320 height. So we're going to do the same thing to mine like we did the last time. We're going to go back to my logo and we're going to change the size, height, and maintain aspect ratio to uh, 320. Now we're going to go, um, I'm going to keep the same type of format that they have. So I'm going to have a red logo. I'm going to dump uh, some nice red paint and fill me in. And then we're going to go back to their logo and we're going to just erase everything. I'm sure there's a faster, better process, but this is the only dirty way that I could do it quickly. So, but now we're going to fill this up with black. We're going to then copy my logo again. And we're going to uh, paste this into the black. And it's going to be nice and centered. Looks perfect to me. Now we're going to do some white lettering. Starting off small and then we're going to keep on resizing it and centering it until I get to where I want it. That looks good. Uh, let me just mess around with a little bit, see if I get it more centered. And yep, that seems about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to then save this file. We're going to overwrite it in this spot and we're going to just confirm that everything looks good. We see both logos in there. With the correct file names because you want to make sure they have the same file names. Now we're going to take those two files, the TFT3 and the Big Tree Tech uh, 3.5 bin file, and move them over. And then we're going to put them into our uh, SD card reader for our display and uh, do a nice little update and see what happens. Just going to do a quick uh, tour of the unified menu display. Let's fast forward this a little bit. Let's go ahead and knock out some test prints to compare the before and the after.
So let's take a look at the before print of a benchy that I printed outside of the enclosure. I'm gonna make everything fair. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, pretty darn good. Slight uh, stringing issues, not that bad. And you know, bottom looks pretty darn good too. I mean, considering you know the, my garage and everything, you got the Z seam right here, we're gonna ignore that. But uh, yeah, I mean, all the overhangs look good. I mean, it's a, to me, I don't know about you guys, but it's a pretty solid looking benchy. So, all right, let's put that one off to the side. We're going to now look at the benchy that was printed after it. Again, <laughs> it's hard hard to tell. Maybe a little bit better, but maybe I'm just being, you know, <laughs> winding it too. But again, some little stringing issues. Let's take a look at that Z seam. Yep, still there, same exact Z and Z seam. So. I didn't make any changes to Cura when I printed these. So, um, yeah, it'd be a hard press to tell that. I think maybe the layers look a little bit better, but again, that could be, you know, fine tuning of uh, the bed and everything. And uh, if you look at the bottom, it's a lot nicer too. So climate could have had a change of it. So honestly, I'm gonna call this a draw. So next we're gonna do the calibration cubes. So this is the before cube. Yeah. Got a little bit of separation down there. But I will say overall, you're looking pretty darn good for a calibration cube. So now let's uh, zero these out here and take a measurement here start off right here give it a turn oh, it's a little off maybe drop it down a little there we go i make it fair that's where it was for the last Ooh, that's pretty bad so all right so only one and the Z was a little bit off, so let's go ahead and go with the new one. The new and improved, right? Wow. Pretty darn nice. I this is probably the best calibration cube I've ever printed. Literally. And I've had this printer since October. It zeroed out. All right, let's give it a test again here. So, calibration cubes are pretty close, but honestly, the I, the winner is definitely this one. But again, it could be conditions. So, but uh, so far, it's looking like a really good upgrade. Now, this is the fan noise that um, some people are not talking about. So, when this is the meanwhile power supply ramping up, so that's the fan that you hear right now. And so. I just wanted to record this while the machine is on. It's not printing right now, but it's on. And uh, so I did another print. It's actually something I needed for a long time. I have plenty of memory sticks and, and SD and mini cards. So I wanted to print something a little long. And you know what? This came out. I'm used to having some really bad warping issues. And this came out really good. So um, you see some ghosting over here. Um, there, you'll feel that, that there is, because there's a step up right here. So yeah, you're gonna see these lines here. But honestly, I, I really think this came out very well. So you do see, uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> you be the judge, you let me know. How did this piece turn out? 
was, I think it came out really good. So, um, there was the wife did enter the garage, go out of the garage, so there was a little bit of a lift on that corner. So, garbage day, yep, last minute run out. I told her not to go through the garage, but you know, it happens. So, these are the two. Uh, this is uh, let me, let me actually start out with this one. This was the original um, face mount for the, for the display that I didn't wind up using. And uh, so it, but I printed this um, as one of my tests. And these lines are just, <laughs> guys, I don't know, for a stock nozzle, stock cooling, I really don't know if you could get any better. Again, let me know. It's, it's pretty darn good. And uh, this is the, the one I wound up using. And you can see it's a lot more stout. Um, I actually had to make this on a raft. I'm not a fan of rafts. Um, most of you are not, but I tried so many times to get this to print without one and I had to use a raft. But it's, again, these lines are just really nice and straight. So, well, I would say, honestly, it's, it's kind of a draw. I mean, what do you think, Ducky? Uh, yeah, you're going to stay in the middle. You know, the conditions-wise, you know, ambient temperatures in the garage. You know, the, this is, the again, the best cube I've ever printed. I think it looks great. So, all right, let's get back to it. <laughs> Can you believe it? We were at the end of the video. This is my last shot of the video. You made it. Wake up. Hello. Wake up. Yes, we're there. So, um, as you see, I kind of moved the duck. <laughs> yeah, and he's, uh, regime, whatever, is pointing more towards uh, the, up, you know, the upgraded um, prints here. So, I think it just feels right. Because, uh, you know, honestly, there was not much of a difference between the prints. Uh, it's, uh, the ambient temperature in the garage wasn't that far off between the two. And plus, I, I printed a lot of these parts and even the bench sheet and the cube when the machine was half torn apart still. So, yes, it's, it's hit or miss. You comment below on which you think is better. So, I am still leaning towards the upgraded parts prints so because I didn't change anything on the top so but so I know you're asking yourself or asking me so was this worth it what are the negatives and the positives what are the end results well since news is focused on negativity first we're going to go through the negatives or the not so great things so and they're not that many well, let's go with the negative of this printer first. What was so gleaming negative besides the firmware that you had to update on certain rate when it was came out the first time for it to be able to touch? To me, when I did my video, it was that filament runout sensor. When that thing got triggered, this bed turns off. Yeah, what a marvelous idea. Besides the econo mode, but we won't go there either. But yes, why? have a darn filament runout sensor when the bed turns off. I mean, we're all waiting for the source code to be released on this, and that could possibly enable that. Or just replacing the display with a regular Marlin display. But I just can't believe it. So this is what the results are with doing a filament runout test. Now we're testing the filament runout. So here's a test screen, and I uh, cut the <laughs> yeah, I cut the filament, and as you can see, it is uh, printing a ghost. Nothing to do here. Now we're gonna switch it to the Marlin mode screen. I cut the filament, and look, it is saying, "Hey, we need to change some filament." So I'm going to change the filament, and now look what happens. Resume printing. Perfect. Just the way it should be. So, there you have it. <laughs> yeah, so it's now a battle of the displays. 
So you have the classic Marlin display that did it absolutely perfect. And you had the touchscreen display that said, I'm just going to keep on running with it. It printed nothing. It ran out and just kept on printing. Ghost printing. So, yes. Now, let's keep on going with the battle of dis the displays. It's going to be a movie, I'm sure. So, the Z offset. I converted the Z offset on here in the Marlin display. You got to bounce around back and forth a little bit. But this one wound up being a negative a 2.7. I like using the touchscreen, so I went to the touchscreen and I just so happened to click on the Z offset. It reads zero. Do not touch it. it. That actually translates over between the two interfaces, okay? But if you're going to configure your Z offset for the first time, it's a lot easier to do it in the touchscreen mode than it does in the Marlin mode. All you do is move it up and down, and that's it. You don't need to jump around, and, you know, toggle back and forth between two things and get it tuned in. So now here's a battle of the same UI. So here's the, so you got the two modes, you got the classic and the other mode for the display. Okay. There's actually more buttons outside the classic one, believe it or not. It, it, it just works better. So, and there's a lot more functionality there. Why? I don't know. Why are there icons missing? There's literally like a dozen plus icons that are missing that you can't do. So it definitely, I would go more with the enhanced mode or whatever it's called and not and leave the classic one alone. That's my recommendation. So, and here's the last so-called negative. And it, it probably is for most people. It's cutting up the control box. <laughs> not everyone's going to want to do it. I am willing to carve up anything practically. It's a risk and it wasn't my finest craftsmanship, but you know what? Getting able to get to that SD card slot and the USB is pretty darn important. So you can always run, you know, make your own mount, run the, you know, extensions out the back or something, but you really want to be able to get to it. And getting to this box, it's not the easiest. So there's other printers that are harder, but this one's pretty hard to get to. So now, positives. Really, I really don't think I need to go through it, but I'm going to. So you got an 8-bit Creality board that's at 55-ish dollars that sold out a lot, and you got the Big Tree Tech with you know. Let's include this uh, you know SD extension at 80-ish dollars for three items. You get actually four because I mean three, but we're gonna say four. So you get the um, SKR 1.4 Turbo at 120 megahertz at you know 32 bit. You get a silent drivers. I did the 2208s, but you could change them wherever you want and whenever you want to. You could upgrade them, unlike the Creality board that's soldered on and missing one. So you get five of them in the kit, and you get a dual mode uh, display mode display for 80 ish dollars with the SD extension. Honestly, it's kind of a no-brainer. I mean, and plus you could do RGB lighting. I would love it if I could interface it with this because I could just walk in and like when it's heating up, it turns red. I'm like, wow, that's pretty darn cool. So, or when it reaches temperature. So, I mean, it's, and silent. Um, yeah, I, I, it's to me, and now you have a video out there that you know, someone's already done all the work and now you can do it yourself. I got the GitHub out there, links below to download the, the you could just download the, the, just the firmware file, throw it on your, and go. Now, is it gonna be perfect, my file? Absolutely not. There's always gonna be someone that does a better video than me. And you know, maybe mine is worse than another person. I just didn't know of anyone that has done this upgrade. I'm sure there's gonna be one next week or next month that's gonna supersede mine. And that's fine because the way I look at YouTube is People are on it for entertainment and learning and getting a giggle, right? So I'm an average one-legged dude putting on content. You know, I do, this is my garage. I do things. I just actually, you know, my videos conquer your disability. You know, I I, I, I like to tinker. This is me. My, my channel isn't just a 3D printer channel. This is part of my workflow. Now that the filament run out sensor works, now it's going to be a lot part, a lot more part of my workflow. So I really appreciate you tuning in 
I know maybe you learned something. Maybe I, I could learn something back from your feedback. But if you could please hit that subscribe button for me, it would make a huge deal to me. It means that you're enjoying the content and you would really like to see more of it. So, you know, that's all I got for you. I really appreciate you tuning in. Have a great evening, night, weekend. And you know what? Stay safe out there, okay? Stay inside. Let's get this over with, okay? Catch you the next time on Tripod's Garage.